Hello, I'm Kimilia and this is Kini News. Muda President Syed Sadiq Syed Abdurrahman has announced that his party may reconsider their position in the government. This came following the AGC's move to withdraw Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi's charges yesterday, which led to the Kuala Lumpur High Court granting him a discharge, not amounting to an acquittal. In a press conference today, Syed Sadiq said Muda will be launching a protest campaign called Kempen Dakwa Zahid with three demands. <clears throat> In a meeting yesterday, Muda decided that this is one of the biggest red line crossed, garisan merah yang telah pun dilanggar. Dengan itu, Muda tidak teragak-agak untuk menilai kedudukannya dalam kerajaan perpaduan pada hari ini. Sebab itu, Muda mengambil langkah untuk menggerakkan kempen protes di jalan raya, di social media dan juga kempen dakwa zahid yang dipecahkan kepada tiga bahagian. He added that Muda will take actions as a party if the claims are not fulfilled. The demands are for the AGC to provide an explanation of the DNAA granted to Zahid during the parliamentary sitting, which will reconvene next week and not through a press statement so that it can be debated. The separation of the Public Prosecutor's Office from the AGC immediately to ensure that there is no interference from executives in any court case and a timeline on when it can be implemented. The third is for the public prosecutor to recharge Zahid in court immediately and for no other cases that involve the people's money be dropped like what happened to Zahid's case. Still on Zahid's DNAA, Latifa Koya has urged the government to stop trying to fool the people by repeating that it was the court's decision. She said the government can't pass the responsibility on the decision to anyone else. Lawyer Latifa Koya has called on the government to stop saying that the discharge not amounting to an acquittal for Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi was a court decision. In a post on Twitter, Latifa, who was once the MACC chief, said that the court was constitutionally bound to grant the request made by prosecutors. She said according to Article 145, Bracket 3 of the Federal Constitution, the court has no choice in the matter, so the government should stop trying to fool the people by pinning it on the court. Latifa said that it is dishonest to do so and a slur upon a hard-working judge. She added that the government cannot push the blame onto anyone else. Article 145, bracket 3 of the Federal Constitution states that the Attorney General shall have power, exercisable at his discretion, to institute, conduct or discontinue any proceedings for an offence. Yesterday, several government figures, including Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail, had said that the DNAA outcome for Zahid was a court decision. Saifuddin said that the court's decision to grant Zahid a DNAA was similar to how the court acquitted Perikatan National Chief Muhyiddin Yassin on four abuse of power charges in the Jana Wibawa case. However, lawyer Lim Weizia dismissed this and said that in Muhyiddin's case, it was the accused who applied to strike out the charges, whereas in Zahid's case, it was the prosecution that did so. He added that the judge effectively has no choice but to either grant DNAA or full acquittal. The prosecution yesterday applied for a DNAA on all 47 charges against Zahid on alleged corruption involving Yayasan Akalbudi. Bersih also commented on the issue. They urged the government to separate the powers between the Attorney General and Public Prosecutor. Bursi had called on Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim to announce a clear roadmap and timeline for the separation of public prosecution from the Attorney General's chamber within this week. This came after the Kuala Lumpur High Court granted Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi a discharge not amounting to an acquittal on 47 charges. In a statement yesterday, Bursih expressed its dismay over the ruling which was made following an application by the prosecution for a DNAA in Zahid's case, which it said was unacceptable. Bursih said that the anti-corruption and reformist credentials of the current unity government is under serious doubt following the decision by the prosecution. They said as it stands now, the Attorney General is a political appointee advising the government who also plays the dual role of public prosecutor with the power to initiate or drop criminal charges. 
They added that this power can be abused and weaponized for political gain. Bersis said that the separation of powers has been advocated by civil society groups and they have already come up with thorough recommendations on how it can be done. They added that the only action left is to implement it by the government. The group said that the AGC must also refrain from withdrawing any more charges involving high-profile cases until the powers between the AG and public prosecutor are separated and to leave the decision to the judges. They also urged the AGC to reveal the possible new charges or new directions of their investigation against Zahid. Bursin noted that if no new charges are filed, then Zahid could apply for an acquittal within months. Thus, the prosecution must review all the 47 charges again and recharge if necessary. We are often faced with nutrient deficiency needed for our body. This is why I choose G-Sure. G-Sure is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink that helps to improve the immune system and strengthen our bodies. It has to be Good Morning G-Sure. Meanwhile, DAP wants the AG to explain the reason for withdrawing the charges. Lok said this was to ensure accountability. DAP has called on Attorney General Idris Harun to explain why Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi was granted a discharge not amounting to an acquittal for 47 corruption charges. In a statement today, DAP Secretary General Anthony Loke said the party took note of the critical views being aired by the public on the matter. Loke said that the request from the prosecution to end the proceedings in order to conduct a more detailed investigation is at the discretion of the Attorney General and decided by the court. He added that while DAP respects the judicial process and the court's decision, in order to ensure justice and accountability, Idrus should explain the factors which led to the decision. He said the explanation is important to ensure the public and the international community remain confident about our judicial system. Lok also implied that the Attorney General's decision was not influenced by Putrajaya. He stressed that DAP will always uphold the principle of separation of powers between the judiciary, executive and legislative, and will ensure that there is no executive interference in any court cases. Yesterday, Zahid was granted a DNAA for 47 corruption charges in the corruption case involving funds from Yayasan Akalbudi, a charity which Zahid founded and leads. Following this, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's administration had been met with criticism over the decision. Zahid's case also made it to the campaign for the by-elections in Johor. In a speech at H. Ramah last night, Afif Bahardin questioned if Anwar's government was what the Chinese voters had hoped for. Perikata National Leader Dr. Afif Bahardin has joined those criticizing the decision to grant Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi a discharge not amounting to an acquittal for 47 corruption charges. While on the campaign trail for PN's candidate for Pulai last night, Afif claimed that Zahid's verdict was proof of how the reformacy call for change that founded PKR has now died. He said it died with Pakatan Harapan and Amno, or more accurately, with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and Zahid. Afif added that there is no longer any moral standing for them to talk about reforms. He also asked whether the government led by Anwar is what the Chinese had hoped for. Are you willing to let the country to be ruled by the corrupt regime? Are you willing to jeopardize the future of our children? Is this the government that the Chinese people want? Inikah rupa kerajaan yang orang Cina mau? Malu kalau orang Cina masih mau kerajaan seperti itu. Orang Melayu majoritinya tolak kerajaan yang rasuah. Saya nak sebut ini. Saya tak mau berselindung lagi. Afif added that he was bringing the matter up in the struggle to save the nation. He also questioned the purported silence from DAP leaders over Zahid's verdict, while at the same time crediting PKR MP Hassan Abdul Karim, who earlier today lamented how the DNAA would impact the people's trust. Another PN leader has also declared the death of the Reformasi movement. Wan Faisal claimed that Anwar was willing to sacrifice the integrity of his reforms just to save the life of his student. 
The close relationship between Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and his deputy, Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, is like a candle that burns itself. This is according to Perikatan National Youth Deputy Chief Wan Ahmad Faisal Wan Ahmad Kamal. Speaking at PN Youth Talk in Moa last night, he claimed that Anwar, who is also Pakatan Harapan chairperson, was willing to sacrifice the integrity of his reforms just to save the life of his beloved student. Seorang guru yang ada pada hari ini sanggup membakar diri seperti lilin, sanggup mengorbankan integriti reformasi dia. Untuk menyelamatkan nyawa anak murid yang tercinta. Tuan-tuan, hari ini Malaysia dikejutkan. Tapi tak pelik, kita dah jangka. Orang nombor dua negara yang amat berhormat, Datuk Seri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi, telah dibebaskan, dilepaskan tanpa dibebaskan daripada 47 pertuduhan kes mahkamah salah guna kuasa rasuah yang dia dah hadapi selama 4 tahun. Elaborating on the court decision, the Machang MP added that it was a black spot in the history of national justice. He questioned why a person who had faced 47 charges in court and had been tried for four years in a case that had almost reached the finish line would have the charges withdrawn when the prosecution had established prima facie. Zahid was facing 47 charges of corruption, criminal breach of trust and money laundering involving Yayasan Akalbudi funds. Judge Colin Lawrence Sequira had granted the DNAA sought by Deputy Public Prosecutor Muhammad Dusuki Mokta. Tiong King Singh has called on Mahathir to stop commenting on issues and learn from former Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi. Progressive Democratic Party President Tiong King Singh has urged former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Muhammad to stop confusing the people, especially when it comes to issues on race, religion and royalty. Tiong, who is also Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister, said leaders should emulate former Prime Minister Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, who has chosen to stay out of politics in his retirement and wish the country well. In a speech at a unity dinner with the Chinese community in Johor last night, Tiong said Mahathir should learn from Abdullah, who has chosen to keep quiet after stepping down. Tiong then questioned why Dr. Mahathir couldn't keep quiet. He also hit out at Perikatan National Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin and said that Muhyiddin should not resort to religious rhetoric which can create misunderstandings as Malaysia has various races and religions. He said maybe Muhyiddin forgot that Malaysia is a multiracial and religious country and that there must be mutual respect. He added that Muhyiddin should not instigate people just because he wants their votes. Tiong also urged the public to give time and space to Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim to rejuvenate the country's economy. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you would like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.